Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider uh, this morning comes to us from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. Now, last week, we looked at Mark chapter 13 where Jesus was discussing the last days of the Old Testament era with his disciples. And he was letting them know that it was all coming to an end and that Jerusalem would be judged for her unbelief and that the temple itself would be destroyed, that not one stone would be laying on top of another when it was all said and done. He then let them know that it would all happen in their generation. Now, 2 Peter is written probably 30 years after Jesus had that conversation. Still, no sign of judgment. And the people were beginning beginning to murmur. There were scoffers. And they were saying things like, look, things are going on just as they always have. And your Jesus, he isn't coming in his kingdom. We see nothing. And Peter let them know, and that's where this, where we come to our text now, that with God, a thousand years is like a day and a day is like a thousand years. Time is different for God. And that God indeed is coming in his kingdom. Christ is coming in his kingdom. And in fact, if this was written when scholars think that it was, probably somewhere between 60 and 65 AD, well, you've got anywhere from five to 10 more years before God shows up, where Jerusalem is indeed judged and the temple is destroyed. And that was sort of the, the, the stamp, that was the mark of the end of the Old Testament era and the beginning of the New Testament era and of the kingdom of Christ in this world. And from there, the kingdom just began to grow and grow until it is what it is now, where there are Christians all over the earth. For it is an everlasting kingdom that that spans the earth, just as Jesus had told us it would be. But at the time that Peter's writing this, Jerusalem had not been judged. The temple still stood. And people are saying, where is this Jesus? Well, Peter lets them know that indeed God is faithful to his promises and that he will establish his kingdom and that he will come again to recreate all of creation. Now, you know very well that on the last day, you're going to be raised from the dead and given a glorified body, one that will never suffer again, one that will not die, one that cannot sin, Did you also realize that this earth is going to be recreated? Not just the earth, but the whole entire universe. That's what the scriptures mean when they say heavens and earth. Heavens meaning the sky, outer space. All of creation, the entire universe has been tainted with sin and it needs to be recreated. And understand this is recreation. This isn't, this isn't scrapping it and starting over again. He is recreating the universe, the same universe. We might as well say he's resurrecting the universe, just as he's resurrecting us. But understand, too, that God's time is different. For God a day is likened unto a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. And so when he talks about doing things from our perspective, we may say, boy, it's taking a long time. But he began the recreating of the universe with his death, his resurrection, 
his ascension into heaven, and then put a mark on time by judging unbelieving Jerusalem and wiping out the temple because there was a new temple of God. It was Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. And as the ascended Jesus has has now informed us, we are his temple. We are his body. And all of us collectively make up this temple. This is the place, you, me, we are the place where people come into contact with God. That's what the temple was all about, where heaven and earth met, where God was able to dwell with his people. Well, how does he dwell with us now in our hearts? For everyone who believes he is in us. And collectively, we are the temple on this earth. And that began at his ascension into heaven. Something that we couldn't see, but it was happening. But he put a time stamp on everything when judgment came upon Jerusalem and the old temple that was no longer necessary was destroyed because the new one had come. And the promise was that not only were we going to be recreated, but all of the universe was to be recreated. And would it happen in a day, in a flash of an eye? No, it's happening right now, and it will continue. Yours began the day you were baptized. Your recreation began. God infusing you with his spirit and with faith, planting that seed in you. And then by by connecting you with others and with his word and with his sacrament, you have been fed and nourished and and you are constantly being recreated from the inside out. The renewal of your mind and the strengthening of your spirit. That won't be complete until that final day when God finally rids us of all sin through our death and resurrection. That's when we will be made perfect as he is perfect in completion. But it's already started for you now. It started for the whole universe. Because of faith in Christ Jesus spreading around the globe, creation itself is being renewed. Now, it won't be complete until that final day, and we don't know when that will be, but we know that it's not slow in God's terms. He's not slow to act. He simply wants everybody who will come to come in to his kingdom, that all would repent. Every single person that he had in mind when he created this universe he, want, he loves and he wants to bring them in. If it takes another 10,000 years, God's not slow. If it happens tomorrow, God's not slow. We don't know when that will be. And so the scriptures urge us to be ready. And Peter, and really this is what the, the book of Second Peter is all about. It's about It's about acting on our faith. There were those that believed that you didn't need to do any good works. If you had faith, that was enough. James had to address the same sorts of problems. Paul addresses them as well. The point is that works are what show us that our faith is real. And so so Peter urges people to live like the new creations that they are becoming and that one day they will be in completion. Live like new creations, loving others, forgiving others as you've been forgiven.
praying for others, thanking God in all circumstances, living in the new creation. That's what he's doing. That's what he's urging us to do. You are being recreated. The universe is being recreated. And one day, on the last day, it will finally be made complete. And Jesus is faithful to keep his promises. Amen.